Hey everyone, welcome to the Media Man Studio Review. This is part two of how to water cool your creative content workstation. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at how we can bend tube and get it exactly, you know, how we want it to 90 degrees and how we can use reference points within inside the case itself to find the measurements between, you know, two of the ports or two of the fittings. So I hope you enjoy this video and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and hit notifications. And I've also set up a, a Discord chat server. So I'll put that link in the comments down below. Leave any links that you want and I hope we can you know, help build a community. So I've gone through and I've created the three tubes that I need for my custom water cooling loop. And I thought I'd go through and I'd show you the process that I use to get the bends in here and find out what the measurements are for the lengths in between each 90 degrees in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to redo this tubing right here and I'll show you the method that I use to find out what this dimension is as well as what this dimension is and the last one what this dimension would be. So this is just your basic, it's, it's two 90s with a, a, a 90 degree offset. So you need to have a, a reference surface that you can measure from over to the first measurement and then again to the second measurement. And then with these two measurements, it will give you, if you subtract the two, it will give you the distance between here and here. So if you want to get really accurate, you can actually put a piece of cut tubing or old tubing in there and you can measure it to the edge of the tubing itself. And I'm going to go from the here to the edge and that gives us 139. And we know that this is 14 millimeters. So 139 plus seven will bring us right to the center of this tubing. All right, and then we'll bring it right to the edge. We'll use the same piece, making sure that our fitting is nice and straight. And we'll measure across from here. That's 399. So if we subtract these two numbers, we will get the distance between here to here. So it's 406 millimeters minus 146 equals. So our first measurement is 260 millimeters. That's 260 millimeters from the center of here to the center of there. So now we actually have this measurement from the center of here to the center of here. Now we have to figure out what the height is. And to do the height, we're gonna use another reference point. And I'm gonna measure to the top of this fitting right here. That is 115. So I also have measured how far that the actual tube goes into the fitting itself. And it is 13 centimeters. So if I measure to the top of this fitting, I wanna know how much longer it's gonna be. So I have to add 13. All right, and now I'm gonna to measure to the top of this fitting, and that is 40 centimeters. So 115 plus 13 is 128 minus 40, 88. So that means the distance from this fitting up to the center of this fitting, or this measurement right here, is going to be 88 millimeters. Now we need to find out what this measurement is from the center of this hole to how far into this fitting it's gonna go. And again, we just use a reference. In this case, uh, it's a little more rougher. We're gonna use the fans as a, as a flat surface reference. We can measure to the edge and then add seven. Okay, so one, eight, nine, all right, plus seven because it's seven millimeters from the edge of here to the center. All right, and then we're just going to again measure from here to the edge of this fitting, which is 128. And I know that it goes 13 millimeters deep, so that's minus 13. 196 and 228 minus 13 equals 115. 81. So you don't have to go through all of this, you know, just to make a tube. But if you want your tubes to be square, perfect 90 degrees, and the distance between your centers of your fittings to be perfect, you can measure this and find, you know, in this case, it's just a simple 290 degrees with a 90 degree offset. So we only need to find three measurements, this measurement, this measurement, and this measurement. So using a reference surface, you can just find those measurements out easy. So I've got a couple jigs here that I've just attached to a plywood board and then tried to draw some reference lines so that when I bend, I can see that the bend is continuous and keeps going in 90 or 45. I had a 180 in here, but it, it got in the way when I was doing my bend, so I just removed it. So the first thing we need to do is find out how long we need. And again, that's a pretty easy endeavor. We can just use this to roughly measure out how much tubing we're gonna need. And it's better to have more than less. And so I'm going to need, that says 45. Since these are one meter long, I'm just gonna cut it right in half. All right, so again, 
You might be asking yourself, Mike, why go through all this trouble? A lot of people just bend it by hand. I have no problem with people bending by hand. And in fact, one of the tubes that I did in here, I bent it, uh, the whole entire thing, you know, just by eye because it was a bit of a short, complicated tube. But when you get a bend that is like this one where we have a 45 degree offset, a 90 degree with another 90 degree with another 90 degree, doing that by eye and having everything line up and it being straight and perpendicular to the other you know, visual references in, in the computer, it's gonna be extremely difficult if you're just doing this by eye. If you do it with a reference measurement method, you can actually bend that and each one, these are exactly 45, that's exactly 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And then all I have to worry about is the height from this point to this point. This one fits in there almost perfect. I gotta do a little adjustment to it, but you'll see once we get uh, this tube in and we put it in, we can then make the final adjustment to this one to make sure that these two are running parallel to each other. Where's our measurement paper? I need 88. So I'm gonna actually go 95. I wanna have a little bit extra and we can trim it off. So how can I ensure that this is going to be 95 millimeters from the edge of the here to the center of the first bend? So uh, you do need something to mark the tubing. Try to find a marker that is, you know, uh, non-alcoholic, non-toxic, um, hopefully not permanent. Dry erase markers work, but uh, they, wipe off a little too easy because once by the time that you get this tubing in here you can't actually see the mark and you need to be able to see where the mark is you can wipe off a little bit of this later so i'll tell you what let's just make it simple we're going to go to 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters i've just made a little dot and if you've never bent tubing before it's nice to just get some soapy water all right it keeps the rubber insert so that you can slide it out and this is where you can see it gets extremely difficult once i pass that to see where that mark is and it's right there all right, so before we do that, I'm gonna show you the trick on how you use these. And this is very simple. Uh, there's many different manufacturers that make these little jigs. What you need to do is find out, there's some reference ticks on here, and you can use these to know how far it's from here to the center. And if you actually just put this on here and measure, that says that it's about two centimeters from here to the edge, plus seven. That works out to about 2.7 centimeters because it's 14 millimeters wide, but there is always stretching. It stretches a little when you bend. So what I recommend is get yourself a short little piece like this, put a reference mark on it, put that reference mark, and let's just demonstrate that. Put a reference mark on it, put that on your line right here. All right, and if you can't see that in the video, I'll try to zoom in on that, but there is a, a mark right here. All right, and then bend the tube and then measure what it is from that uh, reference point to the center. And I've already worked it out. It's 27 millimeters from here to the center of the tubing, but there's about a three millimeter stretch every time. And that three millimeter stretch will basically offset what you're trying to do, or it won't be lined up perfect. Again, going back, I want my bend to be at 10 centimeters. That's where the center of the tube will be. I go back one, two, three, I make a mark, and that's going to sit on this reference line. And that's how you bend nice straight tubing. I just gotta make sure that I can see that reference mark, and I can. And it also gives you a nice idea of where you should be putting your heat gun. So basically this is the start of the 90 degree. So you wanna heat from this point past the center to about this point, so about this much of the tubing. I'll just keep rotating the tube. Don't heat it up too much. I'm on low setting and about medium heat. I'd rather take a little longer to heat the tube than have to worry about it bubbling and uh, destroying the tube itself or deforming the tube. Okay, and it looks like it is almost bendable. Okay, I've lined it up perfectly with that. And now I'm going to bend my tube 90 degrees. All right, and making sure that it doesn't pull this way. And then my reference mark, which was here, would then move this way. We wait for the tube to cool. Again, recycling uh, Starbucks cups. You can use that to cool it off, but if you'll notice, this isn't actually perfectly 90. So this tool, the square, becomes really important. If you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but I am off by about four or five millimeters. And there you go, there's a perfect 90. All right, and then I'll just cool it off with some water. All right, so let's double check our 90. We have a perfectly 90 degree tube. And what did we say that it was going to be? 10 centimeters from here to the center. All right, and that looks like it's almost bang on. So the easiest way to check that is, again, put your square on, put it on the edge of the tube, 
And there we have our 10 centimeters. It looks like it stretched about a millimeter, but that's fine. And now we have our first 90 of our bend. So that's our first 90 right here. I'm not gonna cut this as of yet, but now we're gonna figure out where our next bend is gonna go. We know it's 226 uh, centimeters or 260 millimeters. I always kind of, which way does this have to bend? I can't bend it this way. So I'm gonna need to, because I can't get it in the jig. So we're gonna need to bend it. It's gotta go this way. So I'm gonna mark it on this side and bend it this way. So to the center right there, 260. That's where the center of the bend is gonna be. And again, if we're looking at the computer, it goes in like this and it's gonna bend this way. That's where our bend's gonna be. We're gonna bend it from this side. Here's where the center is gonna be. And we have to measure back three centimeters and mark it on this side. Three centimeters. One, two, three, and I'm gonna mark it right here. And that's gonna give us 26 centimeters from the center of here to the center of this bend. Here's where else this comes in super handy. We have to make sure that while we're bending it, so once it's heated up, that this is at 90 degrees. So once that's at 90 degrees, when we bend that one, we are know that we're gonna have a perfect 90 degree offset. There's our reference mark, there's our center, so we're gonna heat it up. So finding our reference mark again, it's right here, lining it up with this right here, making sure that this is 90, this is on our reference line, and bend. So while it's cooling, you can then just give this a final adjustment right here. And that's a nice looking bend. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. And there you go. There we have two 90s with a 90 degree offset. And I'll try to get a close up of that for you. And 26 centimeters to the center from here to here. So the last measurements that we gotta do is just trim it off. So remember we came up, over, and across. It's going to sit in here. So it's this tubing that we have put right in there like that. All we have to do is cut this length and this length. So that's a nice way of just getting, you know, reference points, finding a reference point, figuring out what your measurements are going to be and making your bends that are going to be, uh, you know, within one or two millimeters at the most. You know, there's always stretching and a little flexing, uh, but it's, in my opinion, it's much better than doing it by eye, especially when you're gonna get some complex bends. Uh, it's gonna take a little adjustment. I, I need to adjust this one a little bit more. I need to pull that 90 in so that it's running a little more parallel to each other. Um, but that's the method I use when I bend hard tubing. So the next step for me is I'm gonna pull off these brackets that are here and I'm gonna paint them white. I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna paint the pump yet, uh, but I think I might leave the fins black and then paint the pump white. I've also taken the front cover off my reservoir, and I think I'm gonna paint that white too, but I wanna see how this white paint looks first, so I'll start with the brackets. So let me go and do that work, then I'll come back and show you guys. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the video we did where we took two RTX 3070s and put them in the P620 ThinkStation. We were rendering with Octane, uh, Redshift, and V-Ray, and the performance was outstanding. It outperformed an RTX 3090 by quite a bit, so at a lot lower price range. But the 3090 is still the single GPU of choice if you're going to interact with the software.